Sometimes the captains are used to organize, but they're not gods and they're not lords over the people. Thank God the captain's there to, to be an example to encourage others. Uh, when I was in the military, I remember I was in the Navy and we had a company commander and when you saw that company commander, you thought he knew everything. You thought he could whoop everybody and he, I mean, he was the best. And uh, because it wasn't because he was a, uh, big or tall or short, it was because of his training, because of his experience, and that's what we need to look at today. That we need training and we need experience. The Bible said it talks about strong meat belonging to them, thank God, that have their senses exercised, thank God, to discern both good and evil. In other words, being old to die don't make you an elder, amen, but being experienced does. That's why God says that he don't want the bishop of the church to be a, a, a novice, being somebody that's young, because they don't have an experience. They might have a lot of knowledge. A lot of times I worked on a job with a lot of young fellows would go to college, and then they would send them inside the plant where we worked at, and they would come in there and they thought they knew everything about what was going on. But I found out that the old men that had been there for a long time, they had learned how to deal with things as they went come through yeah. down through the years and how they adjusted things and how they sweated together and they lived together and walked together. And that's what the church is. You can look at the church today and it changes all the time. Yeah. The members change, the people change, the doctrine change. I'm talking about it in general. As you look around, thank God, some folks is, have belonged to every church in the tri-state, thank God. Yeah. If they've been in the oneness movement, they went to this one for a while, and if somebody didn't like that, they go to another one, yeah. and they go to that one for a while, and then when that one didn't work out, they go over here. But you know what? That's not being committed to something, yeah. and keep them going. I tell you what, we've got to be committed to God's yeah. work, and to do what God would have us to do. God has something for each and every one of us to do. That's like the sister was told a while ago. He don't give everybody the same, thank God, but he gives us all vision. The Bible yeah. said without a vision the people perish we gotta have a vision tonight and i thank god for those that will stand up and Amen. get me a vision somebody that will get up and press the preacher or somebody will get up and testify or somebody will get up and sing or Amen. if they're willing to do things to help the church and encourage the church because the church is only as strong as i would say it goes as its weakest member thank god and because it takes the whole church the bible that god has sent them in the church as it has pleased him you know i don't know where you are in the church I don't know where you're at in the body today, but all I know is where I'm, I know where I'm at. Yeah. I know what I'm, God's called me to do, yeah. and I'm going to do everything I can to encourage those that's with me, thank God. I know a lot of folks just encourage people to do everything. I know in the world that we're living in, we, we see churches, and I'm going to tell you something. I want the young people to work. I want you to work, but I want you to grow into the job. Thank God. I don't want you to, I'm not going to give you the job. You're going to work your way into the job. That's like I believe that's the way it ought to be. You come into the church. Amen. God gives you something to do. Start working on it. Amen. If he gives you a job of playing music, then work on that. Be a better musician. Thank God. If God gives you, calls you to preach, and preach on the things that God has given you. Don't try to uh, mimic somebody else. I can't preach another man's message. I can only preach what God gives me. When I come to the house and God speaks to my heart, Amen. that's all I can speak. Sometimes I go home with the burden. Sometimes I go home with joy. And nevertheless, I've got to do whatever God's called me to do. Let me say amen tonight. Amen. amen. We need to stay in a safe place. When God has given us examples through the word tonight, thank God, to show us where we need to stay, where we need to be. And tonight, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to start out. Amen. I'm going to start out. We're going to talk a little bit. But I'm going to start out, thank God, in the book of Exodus, but I'm not going there, but you can write this down because you can read about it. I don't have time to read it all tonight. Amen. There's a lot of times I, I know I probably bore you when I get up here and I want to get the point across to you and I sit here and read to you for an hour. But I'll tell you what, I want you to, to sink in. I want it to get down inside your mind so that you understand what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm not in it just to, for you to hear me sing. Thank God. I, I used to be brother, I'm jealous of Brother Johnny. And I'll never have told him this, I'm just now admitting it. But when we was young boys, we went to we went to Sunday school. And I was always jealous of Brother Johnny because Brother Johnny was a good reader. 
And I really, when he would read, I would try to read as good as he did when I would be past that Sunday school lesson around. Amen. And I thank God that was really important to me. I mean, that sounds foolish to him, but I'm glad Brother Johnny was a good reader because because he was a good reader in Sunday school, it made me a better reader out of me. It made me try harder. And if you see somebody else in church trying to do more, don't talk about them or say, well, I ain't very good, but just encourage them and they'll do better. Thank God. That's all of us sure need improvement tonight. How many say amen? Amen. How many needs improvement? Yes. I need improvement. Thank God. Amen. I, I want I want to be better than I was. Yes. I want to be a better preacher. I want to be a Amen. better teacher. I like to be a better musician than I am. And I like God's work just to go on. And when, when things come about, we need to let God work. Just like, Amen. Amen. I, I've never sung in a choir. I don't know too much about it. But some of you come about and you want to sing in the choir. You want to do something for the Lord. Uh, I, me being a, as being a captain, what I want to do is I want to encourage the work. Amen. Thank God. Amen. If God sends something to us, surely we want to accept it. We want to let it work, thank God. Amen. And brothers come, thank God. Brother Jim has, has preached here several times, thank God. He's a good friend, thank God. And, and I know he lives a life, thank God. I'm not a bit afraid to put him up to, to speak. And probably there's not very many, thank God, brother, that I will that I will put up in the pulpit to speak. As y'all know me down through the years, I just don't stick everybody up here. But thank God, I want things to work for God. Everything's for God. But if I have a job to do, I've got to do that job that God has given me to do. And you've got to do your job tonight, thank God. And if my job don't please you, pray that God help that I'll be better at what I'm at, thank God. You know, I've been I've been in churches, thank God. And if you're a musician, there's nothing worse than somebody being out of tune. Try to play with somebody that's out of tune. It's the hardest thing in the world. Because once you've got that beat set in your mind, once you've got that key set in your mind, it's, it's really, it's just hard to play. But you know what? Sometimes you've just got to press through that yeah. and just pray God, just help them, thank God, till they'll learn how to get the beat, till they'll be able to sing with the music. Amen? Because none of us are paid to musicians here. None of us is paid preachers. Thank God. We don't get paid to be here. This is not our vocation, yet it, yet it is in another way. But the thing about it is, people, thank God, that sing all the time. That's all they do is sing. They get up and sing in the morning. And they sing all day through the day. I know people that does that for a living. They write songs for a living. Thank God. Well, that's fine. Thank God. But I've got my job to do. I can't be like them. But I'm glad there's people that can write. Ain't you glad? Ain't you glad there's for something good songs that you have. Maybe I don't care for some of the people that's uh, singing them because they don't live right, but I am thankful for the good words they got to encourage people to praise on the Lord. That's what David was. You know, I've been reading in the book of Psalms, and, and as I've been reading it, I'm, and this is the first time, Brother Johnny, that I've really sat down and I've been reading it and reading it and looking at it because I'm not a, I'm not, I don't understand music, and I don't understand poetry because thank God I just never was. There's some people that understands poetry. And God, some people understands music. I'm glad for that because it takes everything, thank God, to work in the church. It takes everybody, thank God, to do their job for things to come together. Thank God. You can't have a church. You can't have a work unless everybody works in the church. The preacher can't do it all. If he tries to do it at all, he'll probably find him in a, having a heart attack somewhere. Thank God, or maybe fell over because I'll tell you what, it takes everybody to do the work, everybody to carry it on. But the Lord told the, he told the children of Israel that he was going to deliver. And he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, and he gave him a promise. He said, this land that you're on, he said, I'm going to give it to you for a promise. It's going to be a man, land flood with milk and honey. But he said, I'm not going to give it to you in your day, but I'm going to give it to your, to your seed, to your children, children. Even when God made this promise to him, Abraham didn't have no children. Thank God. So there was a time when Abraham, that he had, even though God had promised him from the heavens and he was going to give him an inheritance and God, and he was going to have children and God, he was an old man and he still never had no children. All his life, Brother Don, down in years and years and years, up in his 70s, up in his 80s, all he had, thank God, was a promise. That's what he was holding on to. Today, we've got a promise. 
And we got to hold on to it. Maybe you don't have no big thing going on in your life right now, but you don't know what's going to be hereafter. Right. You don't know, thank God, a few years ago, thank God, when our forefathers, when they started out in this little church up here, really, they started up there on the top of Newcastle Hill in a little, in a garage. They started worshiping the Lord. And you know, thank God, it, it, it's time would go on to where we'd have a big church, thank God, and we'd have good music, we'd have the things, thank God, that they didn't have. But if they hadn't done what they had and worked with what they had, then we'd never had what we have today. Which all these natural things, they really don't matter anyway. We need spiritual things. We need spiritual guidance. We need God's love, thank God, in our heart to lead us and guide us. But with God and give Abraham this promise, Abraham had to have faith in God. Yeah. He had to wait on God. Yes, it is. And you might say, well, I, I can't preach. I, I'm God, God, I can't preach. I knew when God called me. I, it was wanting to work in me, but I was afraid of it. Yeah. Amen, because I worried mainly what people was going to think about it. When I got up, I wondered what they was going to say. And then when I'd sit down, I'd think, well, well now, this is the devil start telling me what they said. Yeah. Did the devil ever tell you what they said? Yeah. Did the devil ever tell you what people are saying about you? Mm -hmm. Sure, he tells everybody. Yeah. You get up and sing a song, and you say, boy, you really messed that song up. Amen. But I've just come to the place. I know I'm going to mess up. And I just well, boy, just wait for the next time. I'll do it better the next time. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, everybody worries about what people think about it. They worry about if they don't sing loud enough or low enough. Or, or the thing about this, do the best you can do. That's do it. the best you can do. That's what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. He knew you wasn't perfect when He called you. Yeah. None of us was perfect. If we would have been perfect, we wouldn't need to be saved tonight. Thank God. We wouldn't need the Lord to call us into this thing. Thank God. Then if you look at the apostles and you read about their lives, that man was different men. Yeah. Some of them was ruffians. Some of them was one was a physician, a doctor, thank God. Some of them was fishermen. They lived a rough life. Thank God. But you know what? God brought them all together and he tuned it in like a real violin, boy. And that wasn't with very long when God's spirit began to come in. That violin began to play and the Holy Ghost came like a mighty rushing wind. And the church began to move on. And there was hundreds that learned from it. And the gospel went out everywhere. And over 2,000 years now, God still playing the tune, thank yeah. God. And we're still trying to learn the song. And I'll tell you what, God is going to teach us if we keep on walking. God is going to have a church. Yes, yes. He is. Amen. But you think about this. There's all kinds of theories and ideas. People, they, they went from concerts to music halls to now even theaters in the church. Yeah. It's become a place of entertainment. Right. And now, thank God, it's even come, become a place where they, they make, they're making movies now. Yeah. Hollywood's going to get rich on the church too. And then the preachers take the movies and they get up in front of the, and put them up in front of the church. And some churches, they call it movie night. Yeah. They go and watch a movie. Thank God, but I'm going to tell you something. What's the matter with the old-fashioned? Thank yeah. God. And I know, and I'm not against music, thank God. But I'll tell you what, sometimes CDs can just take over the church. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad for the musicians here in the church. How many glad for the musicians? Yeah. 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 I'm glad. How many glad for the singers here? But I'll tell you what, the world, they'd like to take all your musicians and set them in the back of the church. Yeah. And they'd go buy one of them $10 records and bring it up here and play it through the, uh -huh. it through the sound speaker. And then you got ready-made music. And then after a while, you don't need the, you don't need the singers no more. Right. Thank God, because you can sing all by yourself. Yeah. Hey, Amen. You and if you're a preacher, you can get some good singing music. Yeah. And you can go out. You don't even need no people. You can just have church by yourself. But I'm going to tell you what, God never set it up that way. Right. Now you think about what I'm saying. If this, if not, I'm not telling you the truth tonight. Amen. Hey man, it's it's a big it's a big thing called entertainment. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you what, God ain't worried about our entertainment. No. One place He said that He He, he hid the their, their offerings was a stink in His nostrils. Yeah. You know the Bible talked about the sweet smell of the incense burning, but they did the way they got it. They started doing it. God said it's a stink in my nostrils. Thank God. You know why? Because it wasn't offering up the way God said to do it. God would 
whether you offer up something from your heart tonight. And I believe that's why people can't get the Holy Ghost because they're watching other people trying to get it the way they got it. I tell you what, you need to start praising God and you start worshiping God and you let it get a fine tune, tune between you and heaven tonight. And that's when the Holy Ghost is going to come like a mighty rushing wind. He said like it was on the day of Pentecost. He was in one mind and it was in one accord. He was together. When the music's together, brother, that's when you can sing the song. It takes everything working. And I want to tell you what, we need to be in tune with the Lord. Amen. You ever heard of Sour Boat? One person playing out of tune. You ever think sometimes we're out of tune with God? Yeah. Amen. Amen. We get out of tune. Sure. We, we, you know, you, you run around with a bunch of fellas that cuss and swear all the time. And I know this is something on your jobs, you're going to find this out. Yeah. And you're around a bunch of fellas where they cuss and swear all the time and tell jokes and all that. And you're trying to be a good Christian and you'll start out being quiet. But it won't be long till you edge your way in yeah. and you'll try to be a part of them. But thank God after a while the devil sucked you right in. Next thing you know you're listening and telling things like God that you shouldn't have been telling. Thank yeah. God. I tell you what, we need to be quick to hear and slow to speak tonight because we can get involved with the world. You get involved with work and things and go at work, the things that's going on in the world, the things that's changing the church. The devil's changing the church from the outside because people have let the outside come in the church. Right. Right. Yeah. That's why they're changing. Right. You know the old, the old Trojan horse, the old story of the Trojan horse? Amen. The great battle that was fought, how that they didn't have as many men, but they wanted to get in and take the city. So what they done is they left a big, big Trojan horse and a big, it was like a big statue and all, the, and the men got inside of it and they left it on the shore, thank God. I'm not sure the countries, but the thing about it is they thought that thing was really nice. They thought they'd worship it. So they went out, got a hold of it, and started, they pulled it into the city, the way the story goes. And they, when they, at night, when they all went to sleep, and got the men that was inside that, that horse, they got out and they opened up all the gates and they let all the enemies in and the city was overthrown because something got inside. I'll tell you what, we, we got to guard our house tonight. We're the house now, thank God. Amen. I know we're guarding people from the, getting in the church. We're guarding against false prophets. Everybody's worried about false prophets. I know. And it ain't a false prophet, brother. You got to worry about things on us down the road. You know he's down there. You know he's on the radio. You know he's on television, but what you don't worry about is him getting in you. Yeah. Yes. That's right. right in you. Amen. Things that wants to change you, yeah. to turn you around. Thank God. To get it, make you have a different attitude. Y'all ready? Make you mad at somebody. Yeah. Make you have hard feelings towards somebody. Amen. Get your feelings hurt. Yeah. Amen. You listen to children of Israel, how they complain. He said, yeah. Oh, they ain't no water. They ain't no bread. They ain't no meat. Everything. They complain about everything. Yeah. You ever hear us sometimes? Do you even right now during all this stuff that's going on, this pandemic stuff, and it's a dangerous thing. I'm going to tell you that right now. But I'll tell you what, people are making a pile of money on it. Yeah. Amen. Because they're worrying and worrying and worrying yeah. the people. Thank God. That's all you hear about. You know what? I've had the shots. Yeah. That's like I said this morning. But you know what? I'm still in the hands of God. Amen. I'm still in His hands Amen. tonight. If He wants to take me, He yeah. will. Amen. I've had it and He brought me through it. Amen. If you get it, God can bring you through it. Amen. Amen. But if you just sit around and worry and worry yeah. and worry, your life's going to be over. Right. That's what the devil wants to do. He just wants to take our whole life over. And I'm going to tell you what, let God take over your life. Yeah. Ain't God for all that worry. I want you to start singing a song. Yeah. Start put something in your life yeah. to do with God. Thank God. And worship the Lord in spirit and truth tonight. Yeah. You know, one place he said, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Brother Jenkins, don't pray in that. I mean, I mean, say to yourself, I don't pray enough. Come on. I don't pray enough. Yeah. Amen. And I'll tell you what, I hope you do. But I'll tell you what, I don't pray enough. I see I need to pray more. I need more to draw closer to more. Yeah. Because the more as I live, I see the things that I'm facing. I see the things that's out in front of me. And God wants us to be able to endure those things and to go through them. But when God gave this promise to Abraham, it, he also gave Abraham a dream. He said, told him, he said, around 400 years down the road, though, Abraham, 
He said, your people's going to be taken into captivity. Yeah. Amen. And they're going to be under hard bondage. But he said, I'm not going to forget them, though they're down there in that mess. I'll not forget them, thank God. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to come back and I'm going to rescue them. And that's all the children of Israel had down through the years, through the ages, through the things they went through. They always talked about the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and God, the how that he was going to come and redeem them. And all the thousands that was down in, in Egypt, thank God, when they down there living and and, and, and as slaves, more or less. That's what they was. They was in slavery. And God is building their cities and, and building things for these pharaohs. And God, they lived in hard time, but they held on to the promise that God said He's going to send a redeemer that's going to come down there and redeem us one day. They was waiting on him to come. How many's waiting on your redeemer tonight? How many no matter what happens? Maybe they'll do away with our straw and they'll still want us to make them brick, thank God. Amen. They're going to cut away this or cut away that. But whatever they cut away, God's able to supply it. People worried about not being able to eat or drink. But I David said I was young and now I'm old. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or for seed begging for bread. God's going to take care of his people. He went to front of his place. But he didn't bring them up on God's people. He brought them up on Egypt. And all them plagues. I'll tell you what, Moses was grieved with them plagues. Mm. You know, when people all they had to drink was blood, but the children of Israel, they had water to drink. Yeah. But they was looking out into the rest, down into Egypt, the people that they knew, and probably friends, people they loved, they saw that all they had to drink was blood. How many can see that today? Yeah. How many can see people that all they're doing is drinking bitterness? Uh -huh. Thank God all they're doing is drinking things and making their hearts and their yeah. lives bitter. I know I listen to people talk. Some of them, they get into politics and they almost get into fistfights. Thank God. Yeah. They're talking about how bad it is. But you know what? The Bible said it was going to be like that. Right. Amen. It's going to be that way. He said that, that evil men and seducers is going to wax worse and worse. It's going to be that way. We can say it go on and on and on about it, but you know what? Great is our reward tonight if we hold on to God and we go through with Him. But we got to press through. The devil does have us worry and worry and worry until you're so miserable you can't stand yourself. So people on the job, they come to work, they might be fine. You start telling them how bad they look, how sick they look, it won't be long until they'll be going, yeah. they'll be going home because they're sick. And sometimes the devil just does us that way. Right. I don't know about you, if you think back, there's times that I might get out of bed on a Sunday morning and I might feel good. And as the day goes on, the devil's really working on me, yeah. telling me how bad I am, how my sugar's up or my sugar's down, and that's probably my heart, and you know, all the things that's wrong with me, all that thing. And they put that, and sometimes they worry me, yeah. and I take all kinds of medicine to try to take care of myself. But you know, the bottom line is, Brother Don, God's going to take care of me. And he's not, he's not, I'm not going nowhere until he gets done with me. Amen. But you can give you can give up tonight. Amen. But you know the dead can't praise the Lord. The grave can't praise the Lord. If you're in the grave, you can't praise the Lord. So I'd rather stay here while I praise the Lord. If I can help somebody, I'd rather stay here and help them well. I mean say amen. I want to help my children a little while longer. I want to help my grandchildren. I, I want to keep reaching out. I, I think about myself, I say, no, none of my children go. Thank God they don't belong to church. I, amen. My grandchildren don't. But I'll tell you what, I, I'm gonna hold on to God. Anyway, right. amen. amen. If they don't go, I'll want to yeah. go. Right. Amen. They're going to know one day that old grandpa or old daddy was telling the truth. Yeah. That old man was telling for something that was right. And I only know that in myself, Brother Johnny. And I've got that hope tonight. And if I hold on to the end, that God is going to take me through. I want to go through tonight. Amen. Amen. But if I can't save mine, I want to save yours. That's it. Yes. Amen. I want to love my neighbor as I love myself. Amen. But these children, these, when they went down, I'm going to tell you what, you can see this. These plagues as they come on the land, mm -hmm. them plagues of the frogs, there was uncleanness, 
Don't you see unclean is on the land? Wow. Don't you see that God poured the plagues upon Egypt? And as if plagues was poured out, by the time that God got done, there wasn't nothing left of Egypt. There wasn't no food. There wasn't no, nothing. Thank God. Their cattle was all dead. Thank God. Their land was destroyed. Their crops. Everything. Thank God. Because these plagues took away. Can't you see what one thing ain't taken away from the church? Another thing is. Yeah. And when the prophet Joel, he spoke what the canker worm had taken away the caterpillar. Time. And God, what well, one organized system ain't taken away from the church, another one has come in and taken it away, thank God. And they keep working on it, thank God. That's like they're doing on the Bibles where they keep changing the version, changing the version. I'll tell you what, I don't know how many hundred versions uh, has been made up in the, in the 19th or in the last century. And God, it's overwhelming. It's unbelievable. All the different versions of the Bible. And a lot of these big evangelists, they got to have their own tent, their own claim. And most of them got to have their own Bible. Thank God they got to have their own way. But I'm going to tell you what, God's only got one kingdom. It's not in this earth. He came here himself. He said this, my kingdom's not of this earth. Thank God. Or this world, my kingdom is above. And that's the kingdom that we need to be looking at tonight. All these plagues, as you've seen them back here, you can see them in Revelation. You can see the blood. You can see the waters being turned to blood in Exodus. You see the waters being turned to blood in Revelations. You see where the waters are turned bitter. Thank God in the book of Exodus and in the book of Revelation. The waters, thank God, is the things that's flowing freely. That's what we can't have life without water. Amen. And if the waters ain't running out of the book tonight, the water of life, if it's not running in the midst of the people, the people's going to die. As Brother Johnny said, he said, there's a there's a famine in the land this morning. I believe he said this. Amen. He said, there's a famine in the land, not for me and dream, but for hearing of the word of the Lord. There's not a famine for preaching. There's a lot of preaching going on. But there ain't, a, there ain't a famine for the knowledge of God. But thank God that because people don't want knowledge. They reject knowledge. They reject the truth. And people want things that please the flesh. But the flesh is going back to the dust. But we that believe we're going to go up. We're going to be changed in a moment. And the twinkle of an eye. But all these plagues, what well, one plague didn't destroy, the next one did. The flies and the lies. And we can look at this naturally and just think about it. And the locusts, when they come in, thank God how that them locusts landed upon the trees. And, and it just, when they left, there wasn't nothing but the vines just sticking up there. Thank God. And you can even see that sometimes in a, around in our area. You find an old tree. Thank God will be covered up with cobwebs and, and the locusts eat it all up. There won't be nothing there. Thank God. That, that Catawba tree, there's a, I think it's called a Catawba worm. It, they call the old cigar tree. Thank God them worms get on that tree and it'll eat them right down to the Amen. Amen. And the book of Joel said that the fig tree would be barked and, and the, the bark would be white on the trees and the apple tree wouldn't bring forth its fruit. And you see, they, you can take a tree. Amen. I used to get on my, my boys to run a weed eater. You take a nice tree and you keep skinning the bark off around the bottom of it and you finally you get the bark around it all the way, that tree will die. Amen. And that's what's happened. Amen. We, we're out here cutting and whittling, but sometimes we're not careful. We're cutting the bark off that. We're cutting a life out of it. Brother, we need to have life tonight. We need to live instead of die. Right. I didn't know I was going to get on this tonight. But all these plagues, when they was done, when God was done with the plagues, that was it. Yeah. There wasn't nothing left. Right. Pharaoh was gone. His soldiers was gone. They died in the sea. Everything that was of, of the world that was after Israel that was against them and tortured them and made slaves of them, everything, it was it was killed off, thank God. Amen. But I'm gonna tell you what, God destroyed it. And you know what? They was right there what was going on. That's right. Today, the world's trying to tell us, you know, that the church is not going to go through nothing. They're going to get out of it. They're going to get out of tribulation. They're not going to go. It. But they didn't get out of tribulation in Egypt. No. Amen. They was right there in Egypt. God kept them right there while the plagues was going on. He yeah. kept them while everything was going on. When everybody else had blood to drink, the children of Israel, they had the water to drink. Amen. When the darkness was uh, covered the skies in the land in Egypt, thank God there was light in the land of Goshen. I'm going to tell you tonight, we're the church tonight. There's darkness in the world, but there's light in the church. I mean, say it here. As long as Jesus is in the church, there's light in the church tonight. I want to be in the light, thank God. I don't want to be in obscurity.
security like the Isaiah the prophet talked about how the be a time of darkness and God when darkness would cover the earth can't you see the darkness covering the earth people are looking for some big war machine or some big battle but I'm going to tell you what open up your eyes tonight it's right in front of you what would be worse tonight than to be in a lost condition think he's okay that's it Ain't that the way it was, thank God, and when the when the world was destroyed by water? Yeah. You know the what? Yeah, that was hard times back then too. But you know what it said? They was marrying and they was building, and they was planning, and they was giving in marriage. It wasn't too bad. It sounded to me like they was having a pretty good time. Yeah. But they regarded not the work of the Lord, and they did that right up until the day the Lord came. I believe people are gonna keep doing like they're doing, they're gonna keep living the way they're living right. until the Lord makes time and people's not gonna be ready and they're gonna be standing around. The Bible said in the 33rd chapter of Isaiah, he said that the sinners that in Zion, they're going to have fearfulness on them. They're going to be afraid because they're going to say, where is he that counted the tower? In other words, where's the one that told me I was okay? Where's the one that received my tithes every week? Amen. And then let me go on and be in the shape that I'm in. I tell you what, I'll, the whole book, it's one story tonight. Yeah. Amen. It's not nothing new. Every, every one of them prophets seen the same thing. Yeah. Amen. We just got to put together. He said precept upon precept yeah. and line upon line here a little and there a little. But as these plagues, as they all came, they got every one of them. They destroyed the cattle. Right. Amen. The marine came and destroyed the cattle. You know, without the cattle, they couldn't offer up sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Today, the Bible talks about destroying the daily sacrifice. The time would come that when this evil generation, they'd take away the daily sacrifice. Yeah. How many how many's read that before? Amen. I know that people say it's says a man's going to do it, but I'll tell you it's a spirit that's in a man that's going to take away the daily sacrifice. Amen. Well, what is the daily sacrifice? In the Bible, it's a lamb in the morning and a lamb in the evening that burned in the tabernacle before the Lord continually all the time. Thank God. And that was called the daily sacrifice. Hey, but, but today, what's the daily sacrifice now in the church? We are. Romans 12 and 1 said, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, yeah. holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. That is our sacrifice. Amen. Is the daily sacrifice being taken away? Yeah. People don't live holy no more. They don't dress holy. They live any old way they want to. And what's happened is their her peace is being taken away. They're saying, if you ain't got no, if you don't have nothing to offer for a sacrifice for the Lord, you'd be a miserable person. Right. Mm -hmm. well, the only thing you can offer up is yourself. Mm -hmm. People can pour thousands of dollars in the offering plate. And their life not be right. It won't help a bit. Amen. I tell people, now through the years, people's helped the church, support the church. I tell them, I said, yeah. I said, the church appreciates your help. And I said, I'd rather have you in church and not have nothing. Yeah. I'd rather see people come to church and not have, not bring their money and just come and give their heart to God. And Because I'll tell you what, if you get people, then God's going to get, if God gets you, he'll get everything else. Amen. He'll get your abilities, your your uh, talents, he'll get all the things you got. Because if you love the Lord, you're going to give them all back to him anyway. Right. And that's why God blessed the people. But as these plagues destroyed the land of Egypt, and finally Pharaoh was sick, he was ready to let him go. Mm -hmm. When the Lord came, he said, There's one more plague I'm going to put upon you. One more plague. He said, The firstborn, I'm going to claim in every family. Yeah. I'm going to take the firstborn in every family. That's the oldest male son. He's the heir of every family. I'm going to take all the first one. But he said, I'm going to make a way for you to bypass this terrible thing that when this destroyer comes and takes all the firstborn, he said, thank God, I'm going to make a way for you to escape. He said, on the first day of the month, he said, he, 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 he said, separate you, take you out a lamb out of the flock or a goat. Thank God, and you take that lamb out, amen, on the tenth day, you take it and you said that on the tenth day of the month, he said, which it says a big, which I think is somewhere around April, thank God, in, in that time span. But he said, on the tenth day of the month, take that lamb out. From the flock, thank God. And you hold it up for three days. And you watch that lamb. Make sure there's no blemishes in it. Make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Thank God. And, and when the time of the eve of the 14th day, he said, I want you to kill the lamb. 
Hey, God, I want you to take the blood from the lamb and put it up on the doorposts of your houses and your the lintels, your lintel on the top, the doorposts of your house. And he said, I want you to go inside the house. Take the lamb with you, thank God, because they had to be a partaker. They had to eat of that lamb. He said, put your hats on your head and your coats on your back and your staffs in your hand. Thank God to go in there, thank God. And when that, when that destroyed angel comes over in the night, thank God, he'll pass, when he sees yeah. the blood, he'll pass on by. But if you don't see the blood, amen, the firstborn in that house will die. Yeah. And they did that very thing. How many believe that really happened? Amen. And you know that was pointing to our day. It was pointing to our day. You yeah. know why? Because the people foresaw that coming. Mm -hmm. That Christ was going to come. He was going to be the Lamb. And when John came preaching out of the wilderness and he was baptizing in Eden and he looked up and he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the yeah. world. He was, they was pointing back to that time. That time there was pointing to Christ. And that Christ was pointing back to that time, reminding them, thank God, that the blood had to be shed to be put upon the doorposts and upon the lintel. And what Jesus said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you'll have no life in you, thank God. That's what they had to do back there. He was showing them the pattern, the plan that He was going to do, thank God. Yeah. And He had to come and fulfill it. That means glad that He did tonight. But he had to put the blood on the doorpost and the lamb. Tonight, the only way we can apply the blood is being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We, we're in, whether you realize or not, we're a partaker of his death and his burial and his resurrection. As we talked about on the creek day to the day, thank God, we, we talked about this, thank God. Yes, yeah, sometimes we talk about it on the creek bank too. Some of them in our houses or on jobs, I'll tell you what, I want to talk about it all the time. Right. But all these things wasn't just done, so we'd have a good story to tell, but all these things pointed to Christ. And God, how that he was going to die, and he was going to die on the cross, his blood was going to be shed, and his blood is put over the doorposts and, and the lid on the night, but it's over on us tonight. Yes. Up on us. Yep. When we take somebody out we baptize them, that blood is applied to that door close, to that yep. limb. And you know what? As long as that blood's on there, we're safe. Yes. Safe from what? From death? Yep. From hell and the grave? Right. Amen. As long as you stay under the blood, as long as you stay in the, in the house, as long as you stay covered, thank God, and you don't go outside and defile it, God told them how to do it, amen, and we got to do it that way too. That's right. And I know I've been up here a long time, amen, and I can go on and on here. But I, I just want you to think about this. The people today are thinking when your blood's applied is when people just, they ask God to forgive them, amen, when God forgives them, the blood's applied, but there is no scripture for that. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. All things under the law they was purged by blood. When 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 they took when they took the tabernacle, even when they took the ark, all these things were sprinkled with the blood of animals and goats. Thank God, and oxen. Amen. Was the type of shed. Thank that that blood had to be on that offering of the Lord. And today His blood has got to be upon us. But we don't offer up sheep and goats and oxen anymore. And there are several passages. You can get in the scripture in the book of Leviticus. We can read, thank God, about the scapegoat, thank God, and, and, and how the, the lepers, the cleansing of the lepers, and God, how that they took one, they took one bird and they they killed it uh, over running water, thank God, and, and and then they took the other bird and they killed it over running water, and they let her, they let they killed one and they dipped the other one in the blood, Amen, so that they could be free. All that was done to point down to a day that God that we could see, Amen. In the book of Numbers, they had a, it's a complete the nineteenth chapter. It talked about the waters of separation, which was a type of the water that, that cleansed for water baptism. How and they would take the ox and, and they would make sure that it was clean and nothing was wrong with it. And when they'd kill it, they'd burn the ashes. And they'd put the ashes in a clean place. And they'd mix the ashes with running water. Amen. And that was for the purification of the saints. It was for people that had made state mistakes uh, and done things wrong. And God them, and they said there that if people was and went out and lived in the world and done for such a sins, if they wasn't covered with the waters of separation, they would be cut off from the people. 
And I know there's a lot of stories here I'm talking about. But all of these go together. They point right down to a time when Jesus came and fulfilled. This is when he fulfilled the oxen. This is when they did away with the sacrifices. Now we're the sacrifice. As the blood was applied back there, it's still applied today. But when we repent of our sins, when they pierced Jesus' side, do you know that his blood run down? Yeah. Do you know there was water in that blood? Mm -hmm. Where to go to? Where to go to? Come on. Went into the world. Went into the oceans. Mm -hmm. Into the rivers. Into the streams. Amen. Into the running water. All right? Amen. And Pierce he side. Yeah. Book of Zacharias said it was a fountain opened in the house of David for yeah. sin and uncleanness. Amen. That's, that's where that fountain was opened up. Right. As, the, as in the Garden of Eden, when Adam, when Adam thank God the Lord, uh, took a rib out of Adam's side and he, and he made a woman out of that rib. Christ, thank God, they pierced his side and that blood and that water came out and the church was brought from that. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. All these things was for a reason, Brother right. Johnny. They came from the old to the new. The old, their apostles didn't have, thank God, the New Testament to go by. They preached all the things that were preaching right on but all this had to come about. And today, when you repent of your sins, when you're really honest with God, and you come as hard as much as you can, and you fully repent, and God will accept you. That's what He said. Yeah. But you still have your sin. And the only way you can get rid of those sins is you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. Right. Amen. When that, then that's when the blood's applied. That's when you have remission. He said, now with this blood, we can boldly enter into the throne of grace. Yeah. At one time, they couldn't enter in. Even the high priest couldn't go in without blood. They had to have the blood of the sacrifice to approach into the Lord when they went into the ark or they went into the tabernacle. Hey, God, we was uh, uh, aliens. We was on the outside. We couldn't get in. But we can now, brother John, Johnny, I've got the blood. Amen. Hey, I can go before the Lord. I can plead my cause tonight because I know that my Savior died in shed his blood and I can have life. Thank God. How many say amen tonight? Amen. Well, we got to be a partaker yeah. of that death, burial, and resurrection. Six chapter Romans. I'm not really windy tonight. But six chapter Romans tells us when we go down in the watery grave, just as Jesus died, Went down into the grave. And I made a statement this morning, and I guess somebody got confused because I said if we took all the blood that came out of Jesus' side, there wouldn't be enough to go around to cover everybody. But the thing about it is, naturally speaking, there wouldn't be enough to cover the whole earth. But the thing got but that little drop that, that with a little bit of faith. You know what he talked about our faith being as a grain of a mustard seed? Mm -hmm. You take a mustard seed, it's small, but it grows great things. Thank God. When it pierced his side, it's not that blood that came there, but it's faith and the operation yeah. of God, how he died and shed his blood. And when we call up his name, over this water, thank God the water remembers, thank God the trees remember, you know what, the whole earth I believe in even the old chicken, thanks God but he gets a drink of water I, I've thought that ever since I was a little boy you ever watch a chicken get a drink of water and they'll put their head back and it's just like, I love them but the, oh thank you Jesus for this water amen, animals has got more sense about God and they honor God more than people do yeah. I tell you it's, it's something to think about that we could go before God and we can have this. We can have this blood applied. Amen. The only way we can get it is when we're when we're take part of His death. Yeah. People say, "Oh, I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the Lord." Well, if you believe in it, you're going to be a part of it. Amen. How can I be a part of the resurrection? I'll tell you what. Here's how you be a part. You got to die out to sin. Yeah. You got to be buried. Mm -hmm. I can't lay on top of the ground. Got to be buried. You got to be dead first, don't you? Remember I said that in Sunday school this morning. What would you think if I took somebody, took a fella out and buried them, just laid them over in the cemetery? That would worry me to death. If eat somebody I didn't know, if I knew they took them over and laid them over on the ground in the cemetery or whatever, sprinkled a little dirt on them or a little water, 
and said, you know, I'm committing you to the ground, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And, you know, you find your way yourself. I'd tell you, I'd, I'd, I'd worry me to death. Yeah. And I want to be buried. I want to be put in there. That's what baptism is. Yeah. We're buried with him. We're not sprinkled. We're buried, thank God. We'd be put down, thank God, merged down in the, in the water, into the water and grave, as Jesus was. He went into the earth in three days he came out. How yeah. I many believe in that resurrection? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if we believe it, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to die out to sin. Amen. We're going to be buried with him in baptism. Amen. We're going to be taken part of his death. And we're going to rise up to walk in newness of life. Amen. We're going to be a new creature yeah. in Christ Jesus. Then as we walk, we pray for the anointing or the, for the baptism of the yeah. Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, you got to be born again. you got to be born of the water. you got to be born of the Spirit. Not just the water, but just of the Spirit. you got to have the water and the Spirit. you got to have the water and the blood tonight. He said, there's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. one. And he said, there's three that bear witness in the earth. In other words, they witness to one another. You know, the Bible said, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. He said, these witnesses of the water and the spirit and the blood. Amen. And in the earth today, that's what we have. How many would think we worship God in spirit? Yeah. How many believe he's in the earth? He was in the heaven, but he got it. He came down and he dwelt among men. Thank God. The tabernacle of God, he said, is within men. God's kingdom coming down, men in his end. But the men can't do nothing without the water and without the blood. Thank God. Amen. In the book of Revelations, when he talked about, thank God, they were overcomers by their word. Thank God. By the word of their testimony. And by the blood of the Lamb. That blood is our overcoming power. But you got to keep that blood on there. Yes. If you make a mistake, God will still forgive you. That blood's still there. Amen. If you do something wrong, you and you err in a way, that blood's still there. It's still keeping you. But if you go out and live in, in the hog pen, that blood ain't, ain't going to be there. I had a lady come here to Sunday school one morning, and she said, well, brother, said, you mean that if, if I was to backslide, and I've had the Holy Ghost everything, and I'll have to go back and get back in the water and, and get baptized again? And I said, yes, ma'am. Yeah. She said, where do you get that at? I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, you got, you, you got the Holy Ghost? She said, yeah. I said, well, if you went out and started running around in the hockey tonks and running around doing things like that, I said, do you think the Holy Ghost would stay with you? No. She said, no. I said, neither will the blood. Right. The blood that sanctifieth Amen. That's what sanctifies us. The blood. The Bible said if we go and turn our back on it, said we we make it an unholy thing. Yeah. We said we say we're we're do away with the blood. Amen. I tell you what, the people that went inside the house when the blood was covered the door, they were safe. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Every family, even the animals, they lost the firstborn that night. Yeah. Death came. And after that, God claimed the firstborn. That's why even after that, Israel had to offer up an offering for each firstborn. Amen. Because that firstborn belonged to God. Right. But if they, they, he didn't want them to offer up their, as a sacrifice, but they'd have to offer up something in its place. They'd have to offer up a lamb or something. Every one of us tonight, thank God, we've got to offer up a sacrifice. I know we've talked about a lot of things tonight. But I, I, want, I want to tell you something. This book, it all comes together yeah. in one place. Amen. There, this plan of salvation, I, through God, I can preach it from cover to cover. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, I can show you water baptism in the Old Testament, sure. in the New Testament. Yeah. Amen. I, I show you the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The prophets saw it. They believed in it. I believe in it. How many of you believe in it tonight? Yeah. Amen. If they got it in the Bible, we can get it now. Right. If it was for the early church, it's for the latter church. Yeah. He said the latter house would be what greater than the former house. Thank God. And it wasn't talking about that, that building, thank God, but it's talking about that spiritual house. Thank God. God's house. God's going to have it church. Yes, How many loves the Lord? Yes, amen. He's coming back to us. Yes, Keep the blood on your house. Amen. Don't go back to sin. I tell you what, these allegories, and I've got a Bible study that I've, I've taught on a few times. You compare these plagues in the book of Exodus with things in the book of Revelations 
and they sound alike. Mm -hmm. And when I've taught it, I, I, I remember the lesson, I said, could this be true? I don't understand all of the things in the Bible, but I know they're all written for some reason. That's right. And when I get in here, Brother Jim, I, I learn a little bit here and a little bit here. Yeah. And I believe what one hides, the other opens up. And I believe that all these things, as Israel, thank God they was carried away because of their unbelief. I believe the latter church are carried away because of the fallen way. Mm -hmm. It's the same story. The way they was carried away by their, their evilness and their, the odd of God, the church, the final church, the worldly church, thank God it's been carried away. Yeah. Thank God the Bible said there'd be a falling away. You have to have to have something to fall away from. And the people that's had something, they're falling away from. Don't you see churches falling away from what they once had? Don't you see marriages falling away from what they once were? That homes and, and love is falling away and men's hearts are getting growing cold and hard. Thank God the Bible's talked about, uh, we got to be fear that our hearts don't grow hard. But you know one place you should, hearts failing for fear. We're looking up on those things that's coming up on the earth. We can't change the things that's coming up on the earth. God said they was going to happen. Yeah. Amen. But you know what? God can take us through it. Amen. 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 Them plagues came, but they was to God's people was still there. Yeah. When they put the Hebrew boys in the furnace of fire, when the fire went out, they were still there. Yeah. They had a great fire built seven times hotter, Brother Don, but when the fire went out, the children of Israel uh, the little the Hebrew boys, they come out and they never even had the smell of smoke on their garments. Do you think our God's changed tonight? Amen. Yes, that third son that's, that's went on to be God. But you know what? God said we all going to do that. Yeah. He said that his whole body's going back to the dust of the earth. That's why we're living the life we're living. Thank God. Is we want to be ready to go. Amen. I want to be ready. Do I fear death? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I fear death. I don't want to die. Her people say, oh, I don't fear death. Well, when they get sick. They probably will. Yeah. Brother Taylor told a story about our, our cousin that he was over in Vietnam and he was reading his Bible and he was in a helicopter going, a, a, going down somewhere in, in Vietnam uh, or somewhere over there. Yeah, it was in Vietnam. And they was telling the story. Thank God. He was sitting there reading his little testament and that old boy asked him, he said, what are you reading that for? He said, well, you know, it's in the Bible. He said, you believe in God? He said, yeah. He said, oh, I don't believe in God. I don't, I'm an atheist. I don't believe there's no such thing as God. And the whole time they were flying in that plane. And he was sitting there reading that little testament. And that old guy was badgering him, telling him that that wasn't real and it was fake and there wasn't no God. So he didn't believe in no God. But he said, he said before they got to their destination, said the, 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 the helicopter took on fire. And that old boy got hit. Not the one period of the Bible, but the other one. He got, took on, he got wounded. And he fell down on the floor and he started hollering, Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, help me, God. And he said, that as the story went on, he said, when the old boy got okay, but when he was in the hospital, he said that my cousin went to visit him. And when he went there, he said, Boy, he said, I bet you think I'm something, don't you? He said, I, he said Here I was telling you how there wasn't no God, but as soon as I got hit, I started hollering for God. He said, Yeah, but he said, I never did see a true atheist. And God, I don't believe there are such a thing as a true atheist. People might say they're atheists, but I'll tell you what, when it comes time to meet God, they're going to believe. He said every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to confess that God, to, to God tonight. I tell you what, there is, you don't, you say I don't believe now, you will believe. People says, I'm not ready to serve God, you will. You better get ready because there's going to be a time when you're not going to be able to. He said God's spirit wouldn't always try with man. I believe God gives everybody a chance. Sure. Yes. I believe He talks to every heart. Mm -hmm. I believe not somebody can come by and tell you about the Lord. Yeah. Somebody wants to comfort you with the gospel. Then it's up to you what you do with it. Amen. Amen. It's, it's not a club to beat nobody with. But it's, it's a sword. It's to protect you. Mm -hmm. It's a shield. Amen. To keep you safe. To quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. When the devil comes upon you, you got something. If you know the word, you can put the shield up there, right. and you can stop them fiery darts. But if we don't have no knowledge, we're not going to know how to fight. Right. Amen. We're not. We're, if we don't have no armor tonight, we're not be able to protect ourselves in the battle. Amen. God's word is our armor tonight. Amen. His spirit. Thank God. We need that in our life. Amen. 
Because I'm going to tell you what, children. We are going to go through things. Yes. You as an individual, you're going to go through things. But God will not let you go nowhere where he's not able to keep you. That's right. If you trust him tonight, he'll take you through it. Right. Amen. Amen. And that's where we got to have faith tonight. I know we're, we're living in a time where, where times are bad and a lot of bad things are going. But the thing about it is we need to fear God. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Get us a song, children.